It's now time to start section two, SVG animations. I hope you enjoyed section one and that you feel comfortable with the material presented. In section two, SVG animations, we're gonna be starting off with looking at SMIL, which is its own language library created for SVG. Then we'll be looking at some CSS3, animations and transform rules. Then we'll check out how responsive SVG can be and we'll be working with different screen sizes. Then we're gonna to progress to XML, creating some links and looking at XML attributes, which is the foundation of current SVG. And towards the end of the section, we'll be looking at the structure of our SVG files and some tips and tricks that I've encountered through my exploration to simplify your understanding of this beautiful file format. So this being the first video of the section, we're gonna be looking at smil, smile animation. I'm not sure how to say it exactly, but S-M-I-L, using its own pre-built language library that is included in the SVG file format. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at opening and closing your vector shapes. Also, we can start referring to those as paths. We're gonna be including the animate function, looking at a few specific attributes, and we're gonna morph our shape with SMIL. SMIL, Synchronized Multimedia Integration Language. It's a bunch of pre-built functions that utilize XML and work within an HTML container. All right, let's get right into this good stuff. So I have an HTML document here that I started, really basic. I didn't declare the doc type, but in the future, we will be declaring the doc type as XHTML. So I have a real simple SVG. I opened my SVG object and I closed it, and it's a circle. This circle is kind of like an object. It has a whole bunch of attributes. I have... So let's look at these attributes. The first one, CX, that's gonna determine where my circle starts from the top left corner of my browser. So here, 30% in, 30% from the top. And the radius of my circle is gonna be 25 units of measurement. I'm gonna have no stroke and fill. And you'll notice that there's no pixels Vector deals with ratios of either your div or the ratio of your view box or the ratio in this case of my browser. So I'm just going to go and show you guys what that looks like. So I have a circle here and it's starting at 30 and 30. So if I increase that, let's just go to 130 and I'll save it. You're going to see my center of my circle now starts way lower in my browser. So we're gonna look at these attributes a little bit further in responsive design, but it's really important here to notice that I have inline styles, and I have, most importantly, the ending of my object here with a four slash. All right, now it's time to add basic animation using Smile. So if I wish to animate this, SVG object, I first need to have an opening and a closing tag for my vector shape. In this case, it's a circle. We will be looking at different types of SVG shapes further along in the video, like paths. I simply here created a code which I found on the World Wide Web Consortium, or w3.org, has a tremendous amount of detailed information on using SMIL animations. So this is similar to a JavaScript function. It pretty much has an animate element that triggers a whole bunch of XML attributes. In this case, this attribute is gonna target the CX, 
it's going to target this attribute in my object. It's using XML. It's going to move it from the 30 unit of measurement to 470 in this case. It's going to begin at zero seconds and it's going to last for five. And actually, we do not need the fill remove here, so I'll just remove that. My apologies. And the repeat count is indefinite. So it's going to constantly loop through this animation indefinitely. And look how small the amount of code that was. And once it's parsed, it's on your system, in your browser cache. So that's great. Let's look at what this does. So now, if I refresh, I have a circle that's indefinitely crossing my browser from unit of measurement 30 to 270 over and over again. Pretty cool, pretty simple. So the secondary example is really great as it shows us the power of our animate function to use a stop horizontal position as it gives us the ability to use a path. So path, this is our first intro to paths. What paths are mathematical equations that use algebra and X and Y data? So in this case, this is gonna stop my animation once it reaches the end of my box. So right here I have a rectangle with a width and I'm just gonna simplify this a little. I'm just gonna open this up a little bit. So in this example, I'm gonna have a rectangle, a width of 300, and then I'm gonna have a circle that only has a smaller width radius of 15, and it's gonna animate. And the cool thing about this animation is I'm gonna make it stop once it reaches a certain part along path that it's on. So let's just look at that really quick visually. So I have a circle now going back and forth along a path, a box here in this case. So this shows the intelligence of SVG as it's able to work with mathematical equations. So let's do another visual here. So this is a very similar example. I have my SVG with the same width. I have a rectangle. But here my animation, the path is a little more complex. This path has data. I'm gonna show you guys a second example before I explain the, how paths work. So if you notice now, I made a rectangle go along a path. This path technically has four points. Each time it reaches a point, it then uses math to go to the next. So once we have paths, we can animate our object along them. Really cool stuff. So let's dive deeper a little bit into what a path looks like. So I'd just like to jump back into Illustrator a little bit here. So I just created a new document with my iPhone size like we had in section one. In this case, I'm just going to use my artboard tool here and I'm going to shrink down my artboard to a square. So if I take my pen tool, I can just draw a shape here. And I'm going to draw a triangle, but this triangle is going to have something unique. So first, I'll just draw one point, my second point. If I hold shift, it's going to keep the line straight. And then I'll just close my object. And then one thing I'm just going to add here is another anchor point right on the side of my triangle. So technically now, if we look, I have a triangle with just an extra anchor point. And what we're gonna do here is animate our SVG to have, to have different shapes. So now if we look at our SVG code, I'll save for SVG. You're gonna notice that we are now dealing with paths. And these paths are gonna have some algebra. We have a starting point moving to another point. So if we go back to this example now, you're going to notice that I have a path and I'm just going to fill it with a color. 
So you're going to notice that I have a path here with a fill. And the animate function here has a whole bunch of different attributes. I'm going to animate my values of my path. So very similar to what I just showed you in Illustrator from one shape to the following shape. And I'm going to animate that indefinitely over three seconds. So if I go into my browser now and look at this example, I'm animating from a square to that triangle. So this is a great example of two things. One, the possibility to animate and smile. And two, this is our first look at paths. Most vector graphics that we look at and we work with, we have to be talking about paths. Before we looked at rectangles, circles, and triangles, those were paths, but they had pre-built SVG element tags. In this case, paths are really just a bunch of anchor points that have the ability to be straight lines as well as curves using SVG code.